I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag, of, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, under God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you. Much better this week, everybody. <laughs> Okay. Introduction of those present. Oh, additions or deletions? Oh yeah, I jumped right over that. I was even trying to, addition we have. We actually have, uh, this is Kristen speaking. We actually have quite a few this evening of things that have come in. Um, okay. For first off, Mike Wesco has requested to appear under pre-requested appearances by local citizens and visitors. We have um, the West Pollock speed concerns to be continued for discussion under old or unfinished business. And then a couple of items that came in to the select board email that I wanted everybody to have a chance to discuss. Um, one of which, not officially through the email for new business um, to address the town hall roof leak and the ongoing process with that. I had touched base with Sue and Deb and just wanted to bring you all up to speed um, we got an email regarding a letter of support requested for a monument in the town green. Also, Mike, this was, we were supposed to bring this up the last meeting, but I forgot the state of Vermont for, uh, broadband survey that okay. we can discuss under new business. And then lastly, um, John Knorr had submitted a question earlier regarding quarry usage in the winter. So I thought we could discuss that as well under new new business and then for old or unfinished business i have just an update um, regarding the web coordinator position okay excellent all right so how about are we doing an um, introduction there like we're supposed to do now <laughs> is there is there any way that you can go through and introduce everybody instead of everybody taking turns kristen would that work or that's I fine with me. Yep. Um, this is Kristen. So members in attendance of the select board this evening, we have Mike Beecher, select board chair, John Malcolm, vice chair, Chuck Whedon, and Ed Cleveland. Coming soon will be Bob Jones, but he is not in attendance at this moment. Others in attendance, there's myself, Kristen Powers. We have Frank Nelson, Rhonda Schlangen, Jennifer Sullivan, Mike Wesco, Deb Hawkins and Frank Nelson and Keith Mason and John Sabatka. Okay. Did Thank I get you it? For that. I think I got everybody. Anybody else? All right. Looks like we got it. Excellent. Minutes from the last meeting. Everybody had a chance to look over the minutes. Did anybody see anything that they didn't feel was correct? Yes, not. So, John, will make, John will make the motion to accept them. Okay, do I have a second? This is Ed, I will second. Ed will second it. All right. Any more discussion? All in favor? John? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Ed? Yes. Approved. Okay. Okay, on the pre-requested, Mike Wesco. Oh, go ahead, Kristen. No, sorry, I was jumping the gun. <laughs> I had I had announcements to make. Oh. It is Mike. It is Mike. Sorry. Are you going to make announcements first? No, Mike, you're on, and then the announcements are after. Oh, okay. Well, I was wondering what the select board's response is to my formal complaint of Rob Lee Farm Incorporated sand and gravel using a 120,000 pound vehicle on a 24,000 pound posted road from last two weeks ago's meeting. Has there been any discussion? 
Well, we, we gathered the information you were looking for, but the that vehicle on that road is really a state issue. It's not anything that the town has any jurisdiction over, in my opinion. So no. I don't really know where to go with from that. I thought it was the town has a responsibility of the class two and three, four roads. I'm looking at the Vermont statutes that are online and there is a responsibility of the select board within those statutes, I believe. Okay. Well, I would, I did not talk to anybody that in regard to that on, on my side, I don't know if anybody else so, had talked to anybody on the, the fact that he's running across the road, allegedly running across the road with that machine. But if the town is maintaining the road, the town doesn't have a say in the damages that could be caused by such a vehicle? I suppose we could. Um, I've never been involved in, in a situation like this before, so I'll have to work deeper at finding more answers. Okay, on to the, still staying on, on the same subject matter. Um, the, the information I received back, I guess I wasn't explicit enough, which I'll have to re, I guess re-request it, but um, back in January of 2016, January 5th to be exact, in a select board meeting, the select board approved the road crew to start a new time recording sheet, which will be collected in a database. Now, I'm not sure what that really entails, but what I'm looking for specifically is the amount of time spent repairing the section of Kelly Hill Road. I believe this past February of 2020, after it fell apart, which was directly adjacent to the screening and pit operations on Kelly Hill Road. Um, I'm also looking to see what expenses were brought in as far as materials, labor, equipment use for that particular event. And I'd also like to know what the average cost of a culvert replacement is, because that same truck crossed a town culvert that is only designed for 30,000 pounds per, per axle, according to the manufacturer and the statute specs for design the state of Vermont. So with both of those things in mind, if if the town of Paulet is going to make repairs caused by misuse of roads, I believe there is a uh, provision in the statutes for fines to be levied. So I don't know who, who levies the fine, whether it's the town or the state. If you can direct me on that, that's the direction I'll head in. Okay, well, I'll tell you as, as select board chair, this is something that I've never been involved with or, or had to uh, research yet. And okay. I, will, I will look into those questions. If, if you could put that in an email form, I'll make sure that I answer everything instead of just trying to remember what I'm taking down for notes right now tonight. Yeah, that'll be fine. I could do that easily for you. And um, the other thing is, Back in uh, April of 2012, a resident of Kelly Hill complained extensively about the dust and the truck traffic on, on that section of Kelly Hill Road. And one of the selectmen raised the question in that meeting about whether or not the road was approved for that type of truck traffic and hauling. And the response by the road foreman, Keith Mason, he said that it was approved. So I'd like to know who gives approval for activities on posted roads that are less than, or that are posted at 24,000 pounds. Because I'm wondering how, how the, the average road truck, I'm not talking about the excessive weighted truck that was on Kelly Hill Road, but 
the other trucks that are using that road, uh, they must have to have some kind of approval from someone somewhere. Because it is a 24,000 pound posted road. Now in last week's meeting, I also asked the town, I guess it would be the town clerk for a record of, I believe the last two years of registered vehicles with the town. I have not received that. So I don't know whether that was missed, whether I don't think I forgot to include that, but I didn't see that. Are, are you speak? Oh, go ahead, Kristen. All right, this is Kristen, if I may. Mike, I did, um, just to direct this back to you, Mike, and to either Mike, um, okay. I did send you an email today. I had received a list from Keith of what our current registered vehicles are and equipment for the town. Um, so I did send you that today, though that might not be exactly what you were after. I just no. wanted to let you know. No, there, there should be, let's put it this way. Every, every commercial operator with a heavy truck lists the truck for either as a fleet, part of a fleet with a number of vehicles, and that is registered with the town hall. The description, I believe the, uh, the weight rating of the vehicle along with the make and model. Okay, I think those are those are the permits that Bob usually signs. They well, come in. Be, I think that would be an overweight permit or an excessive weight permit to travel down the road. Now, every town road to be on on a town road, you need you have a a permit from if your truck is is over a spec, specific weight, and I, I can't think of the actual yeah, weight at this point. Probably 26 or 33. I don't know for certain either. 26 or 33,000. Anything over that has to be registered with the town. So that's that. That does not. I'm not talking about the town-owned vehicles. I'm talking about the privately owned vehicles that are registered with the town. Okay. I I believe that's one. Bob signs most of those when they come through. There must be a, a file. They get registered with the town clerk. So I believe that Deb can can find. Yeah, I believe that's a year or every two years. I'm not certain of the time frames on that. I didn't look into that. But I I could I could re I could re uh, state all this when I send you that email. Now, am I sending that to back to you, Kristen, or the select yeah. board? Okay. You send it to Kristen, she'll distrib distribute it to the rest of us and we'll work on that to get those answers for you. All right. Has, has anybody talked to Rob Lee Corporation about the activities that they're doing? Has anybody made any mention, called, notified that this activity is taking place and that it shouldn't be? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, I guess I'll send in my request again, see what happens. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other pre requested? No. Nothing. Okay. Announcements? This is Kristen, two announcements this evening. First is that the energy coordinator position has officially been posted on the Pollet website. Um, now that it's been officially posted, we are open to receiving um, additional applications and we do still have one application that has come in the queue, which has been sent to you guys. And the second announcement is that um, there was a request from a citizen, which I think was helpful and I know that this had been brought up and it totally could have been me letting it slip, but um, I will now be attaching the reports that are submitted to me via tech, via Word document or email to the minutes. Um, I think that this would be a helpful way, if that's okay with you guys. Um, like, you know, when Julie sends in her treasurer's memo and we, I can include that in the minutes document and that way when the minutes get sent out, or I can attach it as separate documents. Um, I know that this had sort of come up before, but it was brought to my attention that it's not always helpful to just see that the board reviewed a memo um, without knowing what the memo said. So 
What are your thoughts on that? We probably shouldn't have the payroll warrants. They're not. Um, right. It's just the it's just the memos. The memos. So, okay. Yeah, it's just the memos. So or the reports. Um, so, for example, usually Deb submits one and Julie submits one once per month. Usually Bob Morlino submits one. Um, and then Keith has been sending them to me via email as well. Okay, we had a discussion about these a while ago and we hadn't put any memos in with the Slack board meeting because there was some way that we needed to- Right, I'm remembering this. Um, we didn't want, like if somebody wrote a letter Right. Left to the board. It wasn't so, necessarily to be right. didn't necessarily need to be added to the the minutes. So yeah, we had agreed that we, right. Yeah, we had agreed that letters would not be included in the minutes. But I'm wondering if for the, the memos, just like you know, what what projects the, the roads crew is working on now and I don't know. So basically it was just some feedback that came from somebody in town that does enjoy reading the minutes but does not participate in the meetings and they asked if there was a way that the the reports or the memos could be published in some way and so i'm open to suggestions um but i do wonder if it would be possible for us to somehow make those available right so if we if we put the memos in from the town, I don't know quite how to word the right the right phrasing that it would be from the town committees and and uh, like the town clerk, the town treasurer, the road. I, I'm not I'm not sure how to make a, a clear cut line. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Does anybody have any opinion on how to make a clear line on how? how we decide what we put in and what we don't put in. I guess not at this point, huh? I, this is John. I would think the uh, we could try with uh, in consultation with the town clerk and town treasurer and the road foreman. Um, I think those three uh, would be okay. I, I just don't want a packet of minutes that ends up being 20 pages long. I don't think that uh, uh, is productive. Right. I, I think they could get it, you know, whether it's included in the website. So uh, that, that was, sorry to cut you off, Mike, but that was going to be my other recommendation. Perhaps we could try posting, you know, each either myself or the per the individual that submits the memo, who is a town employee um, or town volunteer could submit it to the website and we could make them available there. Um, this was my suggested solution only because I, you know, the purpose of the minutes is not a transcript of the meeting. So I don't, you know, I don't know that it's necessary to have all the bullet points in the minutes, but I don't know, just also trying to be transparent and, um, you know, provide the information that's being discussed here in the public meeting setting for those that wish to read about it after the fact. By attaching, by attaching the memos, um, I think that that it all, all, I think that kind of creates a transcript. Um, I think that maybe the thing to do is to, if anybody would like further information from the memos, um, to contact that party, whether it be the road crew, the emergency management officer, uh, myself, or Julie. Um, the only other thing is just to put the a few bullet points within the minutes. Um, you know, discuss, discussion of town clerk's memo, 
elections, um, PPE, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, just quick little bullets. And then it's not a dialogue of the discussion, but it, it might, if somebody wanted to question any of the bullet points, they could then take it a step further. Sure. That's a good idea. This is Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Um, keeping it simple is a good thing. And if one person is requesting this, and I haven't heard, had anybody acknowledge, since we're digital, it's, it's extra, extra stuff to do, uh, then it might be, could go along the lines of a, um, not even a freedom of information thing, but if at the start of the meeting, uh, Kristen could announce that anybody wants any one of the reports, they could, they could be requested uh, either on a one-time basis or an ongoing basis just to email those reports out to an individual and they would they would respond to, to that and uh, it would have to be a renewable request at a certain point in time so that you're not putting everything out there um, and for the one person or two people that may want the reports um, then they will get them and it won't be extra hassle and you won't have like John and Deb were saying, you know, you don't have a, a packet, a uh, big long minutes. It's gonna be preserved forever because the, uh, the summary of what goes on in reports is actually what the select board is working on. And, uh, and it's either approved or not approved in the minutes. And so that information, if it's kept in the town records, which it might be, if it's digital, it might have to be. Um, then that would be the simplest thing to do is for, and, it, and just a, a, little, a slight announcement at the beginning of the meeting that if anybody wants a copy of them, that they are available by request. Maybe maybe we could just start with a few basic bullet points. Would that be a lot to add to the minutes, Kristen? Do you think? Well, this is Kristen. I do generally do that. Um, I started doing that more specifically with the roads crew when there was requests for folks wanting to know more what was going on there. So this, and this is just to clarify, it has been sort of an ongoing request from some folks. What I, if the board is okay with it, what I could do within the minutes, within the reports is try to do a couple bullet points and then as well say for additional information, please contact, you know, the town clerk or the town treasurer for more details about their biweekly report, if, you know, I just, I don't, this is just my effort to not try to put any too much, any, a whole lot of extra responsibility or paper shuffling for any one party. But I will go ahead and start by doing more of, more detailed bullets um, when I can. And while I think announcing it in the beginning of the meeting is helpful, the trouble is it's the folks that aren't coming to the meeting and hearing that announcement um, who are wanting the information. So, but I totally hear where everyone's coming from. So for now, I will start by trying to do slightly more, <laughs> slightly less vague uh, bullets. And we'll see how that goes. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's That's all okay. I've got for announcements. Is everybody okay with that on the board? We're all good. John says yes. Okay. You guys are all good. They didn't say anything, so I'm assuming that it taking that as a yes. Uh, reports. Zoning administrator. Nothing. Planning commission. Nothing. No report. No, they they're not. Um, uh, road foreman's report. I believe Keith is there. Hey guys. Hi Keith. It's Keith. Yeah. Ah, uh, just ongoing in preparation for winter and we've done some ditch cleaning and some spot grading here. Just try to improve things a little bit, but we'll have, well, by the end of tomorrow, three trucks that are set up and ready to go for winter maintenance. And then it's, uh, everything from there on out is weather dependent. So that's really all I have to report at this time. Okay. Any update on our new truck? 
Uh, not other than they started on it, Mike. Okay. Um, uh, we had Dale's truck up to uh, Sheldon Trucks for a recall, so I went up with that. And while I was there, I went down and saw. And they, they, you know, we we didn't really have a slot. They were just going to bump it in because right. of the availability of other trucks that weren't showing up. So um, they, you know, they had started on uh, some of the interior stuff, the wiring and the, you know, the hydraulics and some of that. None of the equipment was put on, but the initial start of the setup was going at that time. And that was, I guess, two weeks ago now. So. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions for Keith? Uh, this is Chuck, and uh, I do. I'm going to ask uh, the Julie's uh, bills or whatever she's paid. I'm going to ask you about SWAC. I saw that it was a thousand forty-six dollars and change for fall cleanup. What did that amount to, Keith? That was not a highway expense. Um, SWAC, it should be your solid waste alliance, Chuck. And that is your, it probably, my guess would be, and I, I without confirming, I don't know, but it was, uh, you probably had a household hazardous waste pickup or something and uh, the town of Pollard is required to pay for a portion of that, but that would not be a highway expense. Well, when we authorize uh, to pay these amounts of monies, we no longer see what the item is because we don't see that folder any longer. Uh, well, <laughs> you see, that's Part of that, Chuck, is I don't either. I turn my slips into Julie, and then it, it, I go over them with her. Initially, it goes to you, and I don't see the outcome. Um, I can look into that and find out, but uh, okay, I'm, I'm, if not, you would. I'm not sure what it is you're talking about, so... It, it's well, as a all I know, it's an, it's an item that's on the uh, expense sheet for the $1,046 and change, and it's from SWAC, oh. S-W-A-C. Right, um, Solid Based that... Alliance. Lenny Gibson, last I knew, was our liaison to SWAC. That may be, uh... That may be completely different here too. Let me go over it with Julie and let you guys know that might be the parts for the Tarco sander. No, it's it's SWAC. It's Solid Waste Alliance. I think we have to pay so much to be a, a part of that, right? You pay you pay dues, annual dues to yes. be a member, and then anytime they have a household hazardous waste or anything, you also pay your portion of the pickup day, and they do them. Um, randomly at different sites, but the ta taxpayers in Pollard are notified and they are allowed to take it, whether it be in Middletown or Wells or wherever, you can take anything hazardous there. And uh, that's my guess is what it is, but without yeah. looking and seeing what is in there, I can't confirm that. Yeah, they just say fall collection on the, on the warrants. So, Here's another question for you, Keith. Uh, on that same uh, expense sheet, uh, the Mack truck repair for $1,445. Uh, what happened to the, I assume that was Clifford's uh, truck. That, well, yes, it's the, it's the older Mack that Perry drives. That was uh, front brakes. Um, and some other incidentals, some slack adjusters, uh, new pads on the front end, just preparation going into the into the winter. But okay. it's more routine maintenance, nothing, not a major breakdown. Okay. Now my final six, uh, comment. Not a mute. First, 
Christian was talking about uh, what uh, what you used to do when Tim Hughes Muse was on her position. Uh, you you guys used to fill out sheets so that we physically knew what hours you did on each particular item for a pay schedule. Can you get back into that? Uh, yes. For us have, as a board? Yes, we have some of them that are laying around there that haven't been collected. That's all, Chuck. Well, that's up to you to bring them to us uh, as a board, I would think. If, if you could bring them down to the town hall, Kristen, could you get them at the town hall and then try and build them into a database? Is that something you'd be willing to work on? I can talk to you about that more at some yeah. other point. We, yep, this is Kristen. We can work on that. We do have to figure out, well, that this will go on to a larger discussion about the mail, for the, the support and, but that's oh, another discussion. Um, but yes, Kristen, Keith and I can work on that. Chuck, again, uh, is our questionnaire Mike in the audience or did he leave? He's still in Mr. the West, audience. Oh, he's still in the yeah. audience. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm here, Chuck. Okay, I was just going to ask Keith if he could you say star six. You tell know. us as a board where that um, big overweight truck is uh is it going on our highways keith or is it just being used in the uh, i think he's run on kelly hill road with it yes from the barn side of the road down to the pit where he's processing i thought that pit on the barn side was closed seated uh most of it is yes yeah, he made several trips not just one to be more specific um the same comparable trucks are all uh, consistently run on the Warren Switch Road and anywhere the quarries are adjacent to the road over there as well. So, and if that's the case, I think uh, the select board, it's up to you guys to adopt a policy and follow it up town wide. You can't pick and choose about who can and can't do it. So that's that would be my suggestion. It's not allowed to begin with, period. Any any excavator who's been in business knows that by virtue of their business. You, you can't run an unlicensed, unregistered, overweight vehicle on any state or municipal owned road, period. Um, I have a qu another question for Mike. Uh, I happen to be on Kelly Hill Road and I guess Mike uh, Zoni Whaley's house is empty. Where do you live? I live on Lily Hill Road. Lily Hill Road. Is that in the town of Pollock or is that in the town of Danby? That's in Danby. Thank you. Go oh, ahead, Mike. You take your meeting back. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Keith? Okay. Thank you, Keith. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Assessor's report. Anything from the assessors? No. Town clerk's memo. Deb? Yes, um, I didn't do a memo because we I was busy, but I figured I'd 
come to the meeting and just give you a couple of tidbits. Good. Um, you probably have all been apprised of the most recent executive order by Governor Scott um, that is encouraging, uh, among others, municipal government entities to go back to uh, the, to the maximum maximum extent possible um, the telecommunicating telecommuting or work from home procedures. We sort of had a meeting, Julie and Karen and Sue and I yesterday and felt that um, what we have been doing all along, we're going to continue to do, which is by appointment only for researchers, um, now by appointment only for um, anything having to do with town business. Uh, most of the work that, most of the interactions that we have is on the porch these days. Uh, we're gonna try that. We're going to, uh, as far as researchers go, we're going to try to get a feel for what part of the state they're coming from uh, before we give them any time. And we're going to uh, be a little more res restrictive on the time that we give researchers. Uh, so anyway, we're like we did before, we're going to adhere to the uh, governor's executive order, uh, try to conduct business as much as we can. We're going to try to cut down on the days that the most of us are there. We're gonna try and scatter our hours a little bit so that we're not all there on the busy days um, and do some work from home. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to give you a heads up about is, um, not that I really wanna talk about elections right now, I'm sort of taking a break from that, but uh, we do need to start thinking about town meeting and how that's gonna look. Uh, there is some uh, temporary changes in legislation uh, that goes along with the upcoming town meeting. One of them is that um, in statute uh, or 17 VSA subsection 2681, um, there's a provision in the law that will allow uh, someone to be on the ballot without gathering signatures. So in other words, they would just need to submit a consent of candidate form to be on the ballot in March. Uh, the other thing is that uh, there's a lot of discussion right now about how town meeting is going to happen. Uh, so I, I, there's probably going to be some changes in legislation. There's a lot of talk with the Secretary of State's office uh, within the uh, family of town clerks right now on the listserv. The thing that's different is, is that with the primary election and the general election, we were, we were guided by everything that came down from the state. So we had regular updates, regular memos, regular uh, directives from the governor, the secretary of state that, that allowed us to move forward in a safe and effective way. With town meeting, it's all on us. So we have to come up with a plan that will keep the voters safe and allow us to uh, get as many people involved as possible. One of the things we're talking about is perhaps sending out a postcard, much like the state did for the primary and just get a feel for who would like to receive an early voting ballot. Um, it's been a popular thing in the past anyway, all on its own, but this year, I don't see that we'll be in much better situation COVID wise in March that we are right now. So the other difference is, is that with the general election, you have 45 days that the ballots are available with town meeting, it's 20 days. So there's gonna be an intense amount of work uh, that goes along with getting the ballots out to people. Um, so we're gonna try and get a jump on that. Uh, I wanted to also talk to you about the grant that I had mentioned a couple meetings ago, the Center for Tech and Civil Life grant. We were awarded that $5,000 and uh, I'm going to be applying it uh, to increased hours that Sue has had to work 
uh, because of COVID and because of what we've had to do to keep the office running and keep researchers hopping with books because we do not allow them in the office and we do not allow them in the vault. So we bring everything to them. So Sue's been fantastic with that. So increased manpower is was one of the contingencies that you could use the money for. So uh, we're gonna utilize that going up into the next election as well. The general election was very busy. We had 902 voters. Most of those were early voters, uh, probably about a 60-40 ratio. So anyway, it's we're doing the best we can. We um, have been working well to keep the office clean and safe and to keep people feeling safe when they're there. Uh, and that's, I think that's all I have to say. If anybody has any questions, I'm probably missing something. Real estate transactions are, are crazy. There was a little bit of a lull, but it's picking up now. I didn't know that there was much more real estate in the town of Paulette to move, but apparently there is. So uh, realtors and title searchers and lawyers are trying to, trying to get in probably before the end of the year. We are gonna have some downtime in the office because we just need to have a little bit of downtime. So anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Anybody have any questions for Deb? Okay. Town Treasurer, Julie. So this is Kristen. I, I was gonna read Julie's memo for her this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Treasurer's memo, November 17th, 2020. There are two warrants to be signed. Payroll for the week was $8,563.76. The total accounts payable was $33,827. Monies from the general fund, $22,618.91. Highway, $13,169.64. Wastewater 6,602.21. Vermont State Class 2-3 roads payment was deposited on 10-15 for $24,620.36. In lieu of back, Better Back Roads grants, Vermont paid a supplement to all towns. We received $25,432.60 on October 23rd, 2020. The COVID election grant for $5,000 has been received. Due to increases in COVID-19 cases in Vermont and across the USA, we are requ requiring that tax payments be mailed or dropped off at the town hall in the secure drop box. I will mail back any receipts, so it is important to be aware that there may be some extra postage costs coming up. If people need to pay in cash, they must schedule an appointment 24 hours ahead of time. Respectfully submitted, Julie Mack. Anybody have any questions for Julie's report? Do you have anything to add, Julie? I, yeah, I mostly hopped on tonight because um, I haven't been on in a while. And I didn't know if anyone had any questions, but also I wanted to be sure that we scheduled the budget meeting. Okay. What we talked about the last meeting was quick and now Tuesday. Oh, there we, go. <clears throat> uh, we talked about picking an odd Tuesday from the uh, from our select board meeting, but since next Tuesday is a, is a during Thanksgiving week, I would prefer not to schedule a meeting on that week. But what? Uh, anybody else have any? Or is that pushing it? Kind of pushing it. Okay. Um. Anybody else have any input on this? We had our, you sent us all our sheets and we've had a chance to look them over, et cetera, and such. Any other night of the week better? Yeah, I'm available the rest of this week in the evenings for a budget meeting. It shouldn't take that long. 
just have to give, um, from a logistical standpoint, this is Kristen, we just have to give enough time to warn it appropriately, as this, which I believe is just uh, 24 hours for a special meeting. So we could go Thursday then, right? Thursday would be a ample time to warn a, a budget meeting. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any problem with having a budget meeting Thursday night of this week? Does John. anybody want it? John? John says okay. Ed? Whatever. Doc? Same program. Whatever. That sounds like enough. Remember that I am no longer a selectman after the March election. But you're yeah. a selectman today. But you're a selectman today, Chuck. So you got to do you got to do the job until March. So all that's right. what I said. If you want to do it Thursday, that's fine. Excellent, Chuck. All right, Mike, Thursday, this is Bob. Seven. Thursday's fine. Oh, okay, you're you've joined us. Great. All right, well, I've been here eight. since about five after. <laughs> oh. Thursday at seven. That good with you, Julie? Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll take care of that warning. This is Kristen. Thank you, Kristen. Now, everybody's had a chance to look the, mem the warnings for the, the bills over. Anybody have any questions or comments other than the ones that Chuck had? Chuck, did Julie... That one that Chuck was talking about, SWAC is the Solid Waste Alliance, Julie? Yes. Okay. So that's that's correct. It has to do with uh, garbage. Was it dues or was it a collection of hazardous materials? Or? It was fall collection. That's all they say is, is hazardous materials. Or mm -hmm. apparently. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. You all set with that, Chuck? I email that to somebody if they would like a copy of the invoice. Uh, Chuck had questions. Are you good with that, Chuck? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So he's good. Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. Ed, just a comment to Julie. You know, the last stuff you sent me, it took an eight days for it to get to me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think I put it in the box outside, so it probably went to White River, but... And yeah, and maybe some other somebody, too, but anyhow. Somebody want to make a motion on the warrants? John will. Thank you. Second. Ed? Uh, yeah, okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? John? Yes. Ed? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Okay. Warrants approved. Anybody else have any questions for the treasurer? Okay. Thank you, Julie. Emergency management director. Uh, yes, this is Kristen and um, this is submitted from October. We didn't have it for the last meeting, but so for October 2020 emergency management director, COVID-19 updates continue to be posted daily to the Facebook page to keep residents informed. Participated in two conference calls this month with Vermont Emergency Management and other emergency entities. Submitted the initial request for $2,010.40 for COVID cost reimbursement, the ledger grant. Thank you to Julie Mack for keeping track of the expenses and the receipts. Submitted by Bob Morlino. I can go into health officer if nobody has any questions. Please do. For October 2020, the health officer performed a rental housing code inspection. And that is all. Okay. Anybody have any questions for either of those two reports? Okay. Wastewater. Did what Jill sent a little brief thing? I don't have it right here quick and easy. Can you find it? Yep. Okay, so um, Jill sent 
An update, um, future priorities, RFQ status, what did Tom Brown suggest? Status of manhole covers, what's left to uncover? Replace air valve near the end of force main from spruce gum pump station. Spruce gum pump station, repair and replace pump number one. VTUMS to provide a quote. Uh, recommend jetting of collection system to get rid of solids building up to prevent future unwelcome clogs. VTUMS also to provide a, a quote from Jill Marsano. Okay, so uh, what I asked her if, if she would put a, some kind of numbers together for the jetting and the replacement of the pumps so that we can discuss it when we come up with a budget for the wastewater and see if we want to do that or put a put them on as a, a line item. And well, it, it, anybody it, else have any questions? I guess we could go into the RFQ discussion. So I reached out to Tom Brown today and talked to him late this afternoon. And he says that, that we really need to rank the, uh, the three SOQs, statement of qualifications that we got and and just have some some formal documentation so that when we pick the one that we feel is going to most suit us that that everything is in order so that we can move to the next step so i sent he suggested that we just look online and find a couple of basic rfq uh, sheets uh, statement of qualification evaluation forms and there's two separate forms there that basically ask the same question and uh, so I guess we just got to look those over and and see if we can uh, come up with if everybody could look them over and see read read through those uh, qualifications and then we'll we'll work through that um, Kristen, did you share the whole Tanner one? We whole Tanner. We didn't get that the first time on electronically, so it's Hoyle Tanner, uh, Otter Creek design, I believe, right? And Dubois, Dubois King. King. Yeah. Um, I I thought I would have sent it to everybody, but I will do so now to make sure that everybody has it. I know that I got it, but I'm not sure if everybody else got it or not. I was um, at work, so it was one of those little, like, quick little break thing. I shot it off to everybody. So um, I will do it now while I am staring right at it. Okay. So uh, our, our operations manager, Jill, has a, a very good working relationship with Jenny Oster at Hoyle Tanner, and uh, that's that's how – they got started involved in the project and they've done quite a lot of work on it already. We paid them to do some work on it already. So, I mean, I, I think unless there's some outstanding reason why, why somebody else should is, can see some reason why another firm is, is more qualified. I, I kind of like to stay with them for a lack of not, knowing any more about the system and, and relying a little bit on Jill from her experience and being in this, in this business for so long. Uh, but if we could just kind of get together a little bit and uh, maybe if you guys could rate, look them over and then we could bring that together for the next meeting and, and choose somebody we want to go with so we can keep this process rolling so it can qualify for grants and we can do a, a final uh, engineering study and stuff and see, see where we turn into for money wise and go to, uh, to be able to do a project that's going to bring some long-term corrective action to the, to the system that we have. So that's what I have to say for now in regard to the sewer plant. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay. Older unfinished business, West Pollitt Speed. We all saw that letter from from Rhonda and uh, Jennifer. Jennifer. <clears throat> and 
we sent it to Chris Taft at, at V trans. He's the engineer that really has the control over the intersection with the monument and all that, et cetera. Um, probably eight years ago, V trans did a study on it and, and come up with a couple of possible scenarios to, uh, to make that better, I guess is the only word I can come up with right now. So, but, uh, I think we need to get them involved and we have been in contact with Devin Neary about it from the Rutland Regional. Um, we're, we're working on a grant to, to do Pollitt Village. And I believe the last information we kind of had from him, he thought we may need to do this as a separate one. It's not really something we can piggyback together. Is that correct, Kristen? That's what you're thinking too. So, so yeah, and, that, that was my understanding. And I don't know if John, if John might be able to speak more, if there's been any other updates from that group. I haven't heard of any updates. Uh, we approved, you know, the pedestrian bike thing with the Paul at intersection and also the overview. Um, and they wanted to keep them separate, but he, Devin Neary seemed to think that was possible too, for him to check out the West Paul that's a separate thing, but we haven't had a, uh, as far as I'm aware, we haven't had a transportation committee of that connectors group uh, for a while. Should I, this is Kristen again, should I also send the letter to Devin Neary? I had only sent it to Chris, but I I can send it along to Devin as well. If you I, think that, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. I didn't think about that when I asked you to send it to Chris, but I I didn't either. It's it slipped my brain, but I can do that right now. Um, as far as a crosswalk there by the rail trail, I'm not really sure who's gonna be our best avenue to do something with like that. But I can see that it it would be very important, and there needs to be some improved signage and stuff because. It, somebody coming from the sewer plant or somebody coming from Hebron really is kind of a guess on who, who should go and who should stop. And then the rest of the intersection is, is just as bad. Um, so I don't know if the rail trail people would have, would have any more clout to get an intersection put there. I think that by the time it gets all the way over there, that's probably our road. It may be out of the, the states right away. I don't. Chuck? Uh, Mike, uh, I travel at uh, Hebron Road uh, twice a day to Greenwich and home from Greenwich. Uh, there is no stop sign on that Hebron Road coming into West Pollard Village. So that the tra that's why the traffic just comes up and makes the left or right hand turn. Right. Um, there is no stop sign. Right, and there was there was some discussion once upon a time, quite a while ago. In my, I remember think that somebody had suggested that it should be a yield sign coming from the sewage treatment plant and in, in the Hebron. The Hebron Road of County Route 31 uh, should should be a should have the 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 right of way. They shouldn't have to stop in the middle of a hill, where it'd be a lot easier and you have a little bit better visibility coming from by the the sewage treatment plant. So you just have to yield to somebody coming from the Hebron way. But I don't know that would require somebody with experience and traffic to. Uh, I'm sure that somebody from the state or the Rutland Regional could look that over and maybe help us evaluate that and determine which would be the best course of action for that intersection. So we'll see if we can get some information from Devin Neary and, uh, and proceed with that. Does anybody else Thank have- Thank you. 
So I just wanted to okay. thank you for the follow up and for acknowledging the letter and being so proactive about it. We really appreciate it. And let us know if there's anything that we can do from our non-expert, non-traffic expert, but observant citizen point of view. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I just to add, yeah, if, if um, Mr. Ricard could continue to be a presence as he is able, um, I think that that is helpful especially the other end of um, <clears throat> the, the part of 153 where people are coming from Rupert, where it turns from a 50 to a 30 mile per hour speed limit. <clears throat> I think um, there's a lot of speeding from coming from that direction, but. Okay. I did, I did uh, this today, I found his email address and I shared that letter with him also, so. Thank you. So that was, he, he's aware of, of everything that's going on too. So, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments or questions so about this? Is this is Frank. Frank? This is Frank. Go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned that there was a study done on the intersection eight years ago. Some time ago, yes. Is that a, is that something that some that the state has a record of still or or? It's uh, very possible. It? I I really I don't know. Clarence Decker was involved, and and I wasn't, and I don't remember who else was, but I know that there was different engineers at the state at the time, so I don't know how long those they stay or or whatever became of that, the information from that. This is Ed. It would seem like if, there was if they a, have a rec, if they have a report already. Just, just a minute, Ed has. We're looking for. Ed has a comment. Okay. Uh, yes, it sounds like if that was an, an official um, inspection, that there should be some paperwork somewhere telling what their recommendations were. Perhaps there was no follow up on it then. I, I'm sure it, I remember hearing the report at a meeting, but I, that's as far as I can remember. I don't, I don't remember seeing any, any reports or any digital, but I'm sure that, that Chris Taft should be able to find that information. Yeah. And I, so. and I sympathize with, um, with them on their speeding because it seems like other towns can get their speed limits lowered. They can get signage put up. I'm, I really can't understand why we can't get something done. Okay. Uh, excuse me, this is Ray. Can you hear me? Yes, Ray, go ahead. I'd like to be a, a part of that uh, study down in West Pollock with the traffic. If you uh, would uh, like somebody to have some input into the Flow of traffic. Okay, we'll keep you a, some good ideas. We'll, I'd we'll like keep you a, committee. Okay, if we'll keep you informed on what's going on and as we learn and as we progress in this process. Thank you. Uh, this Kristen, is, this is Frank again. Kristen has the floor right now. I just, um, I just wanted to add that I have. Just for the record, I have officially forwarded that along, forwarded that along to Devin Neary um, as well, and asked him to for whatever input he might have or experiences he may have had with that intersection, and um, let him know that we were in the process of pursuing some grant opportunities, speed study, speed studies, et cetera, for downtown Paula, and would love to be proactive about getting the same initiatives going for West Paula. So. I'll keep everybody in the loop as to when I hear responses from him. Okay, thank um, you. Yeah, this Ed again. Then. Ed? Chris, now, would you yes, then ask right. him to, is, would he be the one to check and see if there's any recommendations from eight years ago? Yeah, I'll br this is Kristen again. I'll bring that up. Um, I think Chris Taft might be, the, I mean, both of them. And so when I hear back from them, I will certainly raise that question as well. Okay, thanks. Good one. Okay. Frank? 
Is this Frank again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been talked about on and off, but nothing's been purchased because it wasn't in the budget. But the electronic radar speed signs um, would, in this budget season, Julie, would probably want to be added on. I don't think you need it as a line item. Uh, and that might help a lot with the problem. But you may need a tool in West Poly. Um, just as a thought. But again, that's up for debate. Thank you. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Um, yeah, okay, the town hall roof. Oh, Ed, do you have something on? No, I'm good. Look, you're good. Okay. <laughs> the town the town hall roof. Hello. Um hello. Uh Julie did just add that there is currently a line <laughs> in the budget. Um so that could be something that perhaps we can add to our agenda to discuss on Thursday for ongoing budget discussions, but there is currently money in the budget. And we should if we're going to spend it, we should spend that before June of 2020, the end of June of 2020. 2021. 2021, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed that. What was that? There's money for... There is money for the speed signs. Well, I thought a year ago that we did something about that. Yeah. So. And I have, um, this is Kristen again, I have over the last several months, a couple of times reached back out to the Elon city who does the radar speed control signs and he's given me quotes and I've sent them along. Um, so we do have that information and then time goes by. So um, if you'd like, I can get another more updated quote and we can see if we can, since there's money in the budget, if we can get rolling on pursuing the purchase. Um, or I can that would, probably, that would probably be a good in, information for us to have. I know that we kind of waited a little bit to see how the first round of tax collection, the, the September tax collection came in before we started making, you know, the purchases of, of non-necessary items. I mean, it's, they're important, but they're not crucial to our... Okay. Um, Dave Hosley is in the house and has raised his hand. Okay. Go ahead, Dave. Mm -hmm. He's muted. There should be a button. Yeah, Dave. he's muted. I've, I've asked if you'd like to unmute yourself. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, when you're when you're reaching out to the state for their um, input on that intersection, is there any way that you can um, mention some sort of a design um, with the idea of moving that monument? That's definitely going to be part of the discussion. Um, the last time it seems like I remember it's it's going to be very difficult to do anything to that intersection to really correct it without moving the monument. I, the fire department was still interested in, um, you know, that little project of trying to get rid of the building and um, put the monument and, there. Yeah. Moving the monument over there was some sort of little green and maybe a little bit of extra parking. Um, Maybe maybe you can uh, get some ideas on that as well when you're talking to them. Okay, that's that's a great idea, Dave. Thank you. I'm glad you keep that at the top of our in our minds because I it's, I didn't forget that either. All right, I gotta get back to work. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, town hall roof. Um, okay, so this is Kristen just um, wanting to add that last week, I guess it was, time flies, um, 
I stopped down at the town hall and I was able to connect a little bit with Deb and Sue and Julie. Um, and Sue let me know that she, the, so the upstairs of the town hall continues to, there continues to be a leak in the roof up there. Um, same one that was experienced earlier in COVID season. <laughs> I have such a, I have a hard time of keeping track of what day is what and what month is when. Um, but the same, the same leak that continued to go on. Um, and she has been working with Gib as well as somebody else to get the proper equipment needed. Mm -hmm. That is quite an awkward location um, to get a lift position to be able to go over to the back of the town hall to fix it. So when I had stopped in there, she had been having some troubles with landing somebody to come on over and take a look at it. Since then, she did say that she was able to make contact. Um, so as it is now, she'll be having Gib come on down to take a look. Um, but I did just want to keep you all in the loop as we might need to step in and just be of assistance depending on how that all works out. Um, so FYI. Excellent, thank you. And then you said a survey, what was the survey from? So there was the state of Vermont um, broadband. There was a, a group that was interested in seeing if the town would be of interest in distributing a survey in regards to our residents' experience with broadband service. Um, Mike, do you, is that uh, triggering anything in your brain? <laughs> Maybe not enough. Uh, yeah, I think I did see that, but I guess I must have forgot to bring it back to the... It was I, a... It was a third party group that was is interested in gauging the town's interest in this. Um, what I can do is go back. I, I had sent you all this email. I can go back and send it to you all again and see. I know that the Southern Vermont Communication Unions District, the Southern Vermont CUD, has really mm -hmm. been actively working on those efforts. So I'm not sure if there's any overlap there. Um, but... That was something that I, I had been asked to bring up at our last meeting and unfortunately did not. So I'm bringing it up now. Maybe we can see if we can dig that out a little bit and yep. go on with that. Um, website coordinator, you can fill us in on that, Kristen. Um, so the select board made an offer to one of the one of the several, one of the many talented applicants and an individual named Sean Ruck has accepted the town's offer. So we officially have a, an individual who has accepted the position of the Pollitt web coordinator role. Um, he's very excited to be joining the town and comes to the town with a lot of wonderful experience. So um, at this point, we need to just do some coordination as Elizabeth has graciously offered to continue to help train him and get him acclimated to the role. So there just needs to be some communications regarding when his onboarding will take place. And Julie, I'd also like to link up with you to figure out what exactly he'll need in order to complete his onboarding paperwork. Um, so I will be facilitating some communications with the necessary parties, but just wanted to make that exciting announcement. Excellent, thank you. Any other old or unfinished business? I have a question in regards, this is Chuck. I got my oh. hand up. Okay, Chuck, go ahead. Sorry, I wasn't paying. I was uh, okay, so the individual that uh, is coming on board, he is considered a private contractor? No, he's employed by the town. Yes. So it had been, there was a discussion that the select board had had several months ago at the beginning of this search, and it was determined that it would make sense to have the position be a town employee. Okay. okay. This is Ed. I'm 
I thought we were going to try to move away and have more independent. And then, uh, just a comment. Well, so it was determined that if it were to be an independent contractor that raised the issue of different liability insurances, and it was determined that that would be something that might be a major deterrent and would be difficult to find qualified applicants who carried that. Um, and then we had had some discussions about, you know, trying to morph a couple of different positions and we had all determined, or you had all determined that at this point, the available open positions were quite different. Um, there really wasn't too much overlap. Um, that was just my recollection of the conversations. And I think that it would definitely add to the cost of that position to have an independent contractor, as we saw some from some of the other rates that we were that we were seeing. Well, let's let's not forget here. We lowered the. I'm not sure just how to word this, but we worried. Uh, we lowered the amount of money that you could had to earn to be eligible for retirement and all that from the town. So that's going to affect some costs somewhere too, isn't it? Right, but I'm pretty sure that, that the, the threshold of the yearly, the yearly money that he'll make will be less than, less than the, the, that threshold that we would have to add to a retirement fund. We'd, we'd have some discussion about that too, correct, Kristen? I think we're we're quite a ways under under that threshold, even though that threshold is low. I do believe so. And at this point, with all due respect, I mean we've already offered the position. <laughs> and I think that right. I'm just I'm just saying, you know, that yeah, no, and I fair totally moving fair forward, point. right? Yeah. Moving forward, totally fair point, but um in terms of this topic, yeah. you know, we're we're committed that beyond yeah we are committed so is there this any is other new frank go ahead um now the pay structure is that going to be an hourly pay structure or are you going to do a flat annual uh salary uh which guarantees that you'll be below any um pay amount which would qualify the person for for insurance benefits and retirement things like this could which could run into a lot of expense if you do go over your your limits there i was wondering if the salary is what you decided to go with flat salary and then that's it yeah we'd laid it all out pretty carefully and showed him you know estimated hours the estimated amount of money that was in the budget available for the for the job and and we came up with a with a very good uh, schedule so that he understands how much money is available and how much time he can spend, et cetera. If you, excuse me, this is Frank again. Yeah. If, uh, to guarantee that you could actually enter into a salary arrangement, uh, which definitely takes him out of the hourly wage area and I think that Kristen may know a lot about this with her experience with human resources. Uh, that might be a cleaner way to do it, just as a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Collard has his hand raised. Oh, Tom. It is Chuck. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Sorry, I'm a little late coming to the meeting. I was at the Rutland Regional meeting. A uh, couple items. Um, is the town aware that we received the grant? Have you received an email on that? For? I do believe it's for that uh, Vermont study on the highway award that we filed. What was that one just filed with Devin? Mm. No, wait, I don't have the deep. I think is this um is this public comment stuff, perhaps, or are we we're still going Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. We're um we're just still chipping away at our older unfinished business. Okay. okay. I 
I can come back. If, if just give us one second, I, I don't think there's any other new business to talk about. Is there, Kristen? Uh, oh, John Nor. How about the latest on our uh, mobile home on our lot? The uh, I believe that's all in process. I, I'll try and figure out exactly uh, what. Uh, of the complaints been filed and set out for service on the occupants. So, and now, now we have to decide, you know, um, so it's the process is going. So that's basically all I have right now. So we're trying to get it. We're trying to get that place. We're trying to get them evicted and, and we're going through the legal process. So that's about all we got for right now. Ed? Um, I'm, I'm not sure where this is going to fit in or if it's going to fit in, but anyhow, where are we at on it? And I'm not sure that the weight and per hand um, land deal or whatever, how's that? How are things going there? I was, it was brought to my attention that there was something about fines that had been levied and then they were going to be rescinded. What, just can anybody, does anybody have any information on that? The last knowledge I got from is it was supposed to, the, this was all hinging on a agreement between per him and, and wait. And to the best of our knowledge, that was still in process. So if, if they buy the property, then there's no fines or anything like that levied. I was, I was, okay. Well, I was just told that, uh, if there had been any fines levied, they were going to be dropped, but that's. But I believe that they, that that was the settlement that if that if they bought he bought the property off weight they wouldn't be any fines associated with the wasn't wasn't there something in the zoning administrator's report about um he was on the list i believe that property and it had been uh, let me try and go back let me try and go back to it you know, you guys. this is Kristen. Kristen. i I saw Ed that um, the the permit had been revoked or With whoever the, the permit rescinded. Had, it had been rescinded, is the yeah. word. Thank you, Chad. Yeah, where are we at now? What's the? I don't believe this is Chuck. Um, I don't know if I should speak out of turn or not, but uh, basically, it's my understanding that there is a non-sale. Well, then that changes everything. This is Ray. Can you hear me, Mike? Yes. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, I don't know if you do. You see me with my hand up, or I don't know. If I didn't see. I was looking at. Okay. I, um, I, I uh, also, uh, from what I've gathered, there is no sale, and there's probably not going to be a sale. So therefore, those penalties are due. And will continue to be due until that garage comes down or gets moved. Because from what I gather from Ashley, there was no, nothing done for months and months. And he's tired of waiting and he's got another buyer lined up. So if that happens, then those retroactive penalties are going to be due to the town. And going forward until that garage is either taken down or moved. That's just what Ashley told me. Okay, so then as soon as we hear different. Yeah, I'd like this, Ed, I'd like to hear from Ashley or his attorney or from somebody. Well, 
as to just what's going on. I guess I guess we'll have to reach out to to Jonas and and see if if that's indeed correct. And if so, then we have to go back to our to our lawyer and and figure out how to to get the the fines levied against it. Yeah, because this is definitely uh, uh, definitely uh, dangerous grounds here that we're walking on for uh, for future litigation suits. Yeah. Okay. It sets a precedent, a bad one. Kristen, can you reach out to Jonas for an update on this situation and see if if any actions occurred and and how we can find out if any action is going to occur or what's going on. I think Thank this is Chuck again. If you look at the last report that Jonas sent us on permits, you'll see the Perham permit and pay attention to what Jonas has put beside it. No, I want I want something d addressing this subject directly, not uh, a footnote on a permit, so so that we can keep this going. This. Okay, it just said, it said that uh, the Perham case has not been settled yet as previously thought. That's all I see on his last report for the, the November 17th meeting. He's in, at a DRB meeting in Castleton tonight, so. Okay. Any more new business? Um, this, and again, just one more thing that what's this about? Uh, this came to the inbox, uh, something about the monument uh, commemorating events of 1777. Yeah. New, was that supposed to be new? That one slipped by almost. Okay. That, I was just gonna bring that up on the same okay. wavelength. Um, so, this is Kristen. Laura V. Treishman from the State Historic Preservation, um, State Historic Preservation Officer, excuse me. Uh, she attached a letter of support for a new monument commemorating Pollock's College to the events of the Revolutionary War. Um, and that's all that it said. So, does anybody, this was the first I had specifically heard about this one. John, do you have some information about that? I don't know anything about that letter. I know uh, I can talk about the issue. The, uh, this proposal for a monument um, has continued. Um, the Historical Society has been approached several times. And uh, in fact, we even had a special meeting uh, on Zoom uh, last month about it and we this was before we heard about having a monument of a revol I assume a revolutionary soldier um, as part of the monument um, but we were asked as to donate uh, starter money to get things going and we declined to endorse this project um, at this time. Uh, I don't know uh, what everybody else's feeling was on the trustees of the Historical Society, <clears throat> but we thought uh, we had enough going on with a, uh, working on cleaning up the old cemetery where revolutionary soldiers' graves are. Um, and so we're gonna do that with some of our money from the last year's appeal letter. We didn't send out an appeal letter this year. 
Um, and uh, we also have continued work on the farm project where we're doing oral histories of interviewing people in town about Paul, it's uh, agricultural history. And uh, of course the COVID uh, situation stopped that um, interview process cold. Um, so at the moment, uh, the Historical Society has not endorsed this project. And uh, um, that's all I can tell at this time. Okay. I know there was, there was some discussion about putting any more monuments in the Village Green across from the Town Hall anyways. That didn't seem to be a popular idea amongst most people. Well, the lo location of a monument is part of the discussion. Uh, who we commemorate, uh, one model mock-up of the monument had, I think, seven names on it. And uh, there was feeling that we wanted to do more research about that. Um, there were different places to locate it, whether we put it up by Ronnie Kiblins or we put it down by the Meadowy Rec Center. Um, there were several encampments of the Pollard area revolutionary soldiers. And so it was wanting to tie in with that in addition to being near river and uh, Indian Hill and what have you near where the present stone monument is by the North Pollard school. Um, so anyway, it's kind of on hold as far as the historical society it, it is our involvement in it so far. All right, well, thank you very much for your input. So I guess we'll kind of play it by ear if nobody has any other. Um, this is Ed, I just have Ed. a comment. This is Ed, I just have a comment. Yeah. That the, uh, if the monument in West Poland is going to be moved, um, perhaps that might be a spot for if it comes to fruitation, this revolution, you know, uh, the area over there and have something on the west side also for kind of a, for lack of a better word, attraction. Okay. Interesting. Pass, Thank you. I'll, I'll pass that along Ed, to the historical society. Hey, thanks, John. Just, you know. Okay. And the other one is John Noor wanted to go ice skating on the quarry, right? Yes. I know. Growing up as a kid, we were always told stay off because there's springs in there and you don't know how thick the ice is. That's that was the rule. Yeah, Every, nobody seen, nobody ever skated on the quarries. I've never seen anybody skate on. Nobody ever skated on the quarries because. Nobody that grew up around here that knew anything about the quarries because of all the, all the springs. Chuck? I would make the motion that being that it's town property, yeah. there is no one to be on that quarry, any so of the quarries. Yeah, so the town property. Um, we may have to put a sign up to that effect. No, I, no, just I don't, I don't think it buys at all. This is Frank. Go ahead, Frank. This is Frank. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, Mike's family's been in, in my, Mike's family's been in West Paul for generations, as has mine, and that is exactly what the story is. Is that you just don't know with that ice what's going to happen due to the fact that it's different temperatures in the water there in springs that could create a significant danger. Now, John's new, he might not know it. It would look right. beautiful to skate on, uh, but uh, uh, we wouldn't want to have a tragedy. Yeah. Um, Mike's yeah. correct. Yeah, this is Ed. With the influx of new people, we May have to be uh, probably should put a sign proactive on that. Yeah. So you want to second Chuck's motion? Um, Ed. 
what was it again, Felipe? No skating. No skating on the, the town-owned no, course. course. Skating, swimming, whatever. Is no recreating? That would be correct, because it, it, be, yeah. it, it could be somebody yeah. sliding. Yeah, or swimming in, in the summer or anything like that. Yeah. So no recreation policy for all town-owned quarries? Yes. 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 And will thoughts about signage, is that going to be part of the... Right. I think that without putting signs up, most people probably won't. Right. We'll have to have some type of sign constructed. Yeah. So, um, so Chuck made the motion. And Ed, did you second it? Yes. Yeah. All in favor, John? Yes. Ed? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, carried. Okay. No more new business, Kristen? Or old finished business? Nothing, right? I think we've got it all. Okay. Public comment. Tom Collard. Hey. Let me get some more details on exactly what the grant is. Ed Bove mentioned it today that Paul received a grant as of today, and I didn't know if the town board or the um, town office was aware of it. So let me get some more details on what it is, and I'll email and share at the next meeting with everybody. Definitely good news, so thank you. Julie? Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Jonas had mentioned to me that we were probably getting that grant. Um, I believe he said it's a match. It's a match. And um, he said that it looked like there was money available in zoning expenses for the match portion of that grant to be used on that transportation study. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Does anybody else have any public comment? This is Frank. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, I can't say at that. one time, West Paulette had the fire department put in a uh, built, I remember skating there as a kid, uh, Bobby Burdick lost part of his tooth there playing hockey, built a skating rink in the village and uh, that was a lot of fun and and uh, we wouldn't we, if we could have used the quarry we would have that, that's why there was a skating rink one of the reasons put in the village of west Paulette. Uh, and the other thing is is that as an fyi if anyone has a tick bite there is a company in pennsylvania you can send a tick to they can test it for at one pay level, pay for level, not expensive for pathogens, including Lyme. The next level is eight, six or eight pathogens, including Lyme. And the next level is up to 12 pathogens. And, uh, and um, so if anybody had a mysterious tick bite and they recovered the tick immediately, uh, they could send it off to have it tested and have a yay or nay, whether or not the tick in the first place is carrying Lyme or, or whatever. So that's something I just wanted to add for the good of the community and the public comments. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add for public comment? Okay. Somebody want to make a motion for adjourn? Ed, I'll make a motion Ed. for adjourn. Chuck, do you second it? I certainly will. All in favor? John? Yes. Ed? Yes. Chuck? Yes. Bob? Yes. Thank you all for coming. Have a good evening.